Notice that my hands are shaking. Um, never had that happen before. In, in space, it only takes one thing really going wrong to kill everybody on board. Uh, when they're recruiting you, they, they never tell you that things are going wrong all the time, every day. Whatever job you're on board, it's, uh, well, people's lives depend on it. And uh, it's a lot of pressure. I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I know that I'm not the only one here dealing with stress. If, uh, if colonial security doesn't catch somebody trying to open up an airlock, or, or um, a, a fabricator builds a bad part, or, or navigators mix up two numbers, I mean, it, it, a lot of people can die. Lots of people. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm special, but it's just, it's a lot. We're all feeling it. I thought that kind of responsibility would make me have some sort of sense of purpose. I guess, I, I don't know, I, I, instead I'm just sitting here after work completely exhausted. And now my hands are shaking. I don't know how much information they give you about us before you watch these videos, if, if anybody is watching these videos. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm Nova Riley, Colonist 1014. I, uh, I'm a hydroponics engineer on board the Huangdi, one of the five colonist ships headed to Gigi. Um, I work for the Ministry of Agriculture, which is one of the biggest ministries. Um, I think about tenth of this ship works for ag. Uh, we're basically responsible for growing enough food for everybody on board for the next few years. Um, I'm in the hydroponics department, obviously, uh, which, which grows fruits and vegetables, uh, herbs, you know, to keep it interesting. Um, specifically, I'm on, I'm on the potato team. Our, uh, our potato plants, they're, they're not doing so great. They're wilting and uh, some have already died. I, we don't know why. I, I mean, we're doing everything right as far as I can tell, uh, but we can't release the potatoes to the food team until they know they're not poisonous or something. Which means we have no potatoes. And so my team figures this out. <sighs> I mean, that might not sound like a big deal to you, uh, but potatoes are a staple crop. <laughs> Something like 4% of all calories on the ship are, are eaten and uh, come from potatoes. Our, our meals are kept pretty tight as it is, and uh, so a 4% calorie deficit means you're 4% you're more hungry. Uh, and if we lose another crop or two at the same time, um, Suddenly we've got a thousand people just not getting the nutrition they need. And there's no one to come rescue us out here if uh, something goes wrong. So we either grow the food that we need or we starve. Those are the only two options. I really need a break. I, 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 I'm not sleeping, and it's it's affecting my job, which makes me feel even worse. And I, I'm not, I'm not good at relaxing, honestly. Um, I, I tend to stay up all night obsessing and and trying to find a solution, but I, 
I can't keep this up. I think I'm gonna go for a jog around the ship. I'm gonna come back. I'm going to throw on a movie from the archive, a comedy, and uh, put on some music. Yeah, try to fall asleep. Actually, I, I probably won't do half of those things. I'll start and then I'll go back to laying in bed, hoping I don't kill a bunch of people <laughs> with how bad I am at my job. If you want to know what life in space is like, uh, this is it. Today at work, we audited every single action we've taken since we left Earth with the potato farm. Um, there's been zero deviation from the plan. None. Everything was done perfectly. Every list was checked off. The pre-launch crops, they were fine, they matured, and we've been eating those since launch. Um, but now we're having problems with the new ones, and I, I don't know why. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> it's a closed system. I mean, we don't have storms, we don't have infestation or new, new crop disease. I, we're on a sealed spacecraft, and every crop is insulated from the others. I, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that there's just something getting into the nutrient solution, but I, we haven't found any leaks, so. I don't want to watch a thousand people on this ship die because I just couldn't figure this out. I can't. I know better. Survival requires hope. That's what they taught us. We just have to be optimistic. We go crazy and die. <laughs> I'm optimistic. This is gonna work out. It'll be fine. We'll figure out what's happening. We'll solve it. I'll solve it and we'll be okay. We're gonna be okay. After work today, I uh, got together with some friends and we had a little funeral for Earth. Well, our time on Earth, I mean. <laughs> One of my friends, Fernanda, she put together this little program for the funeral. She actually printed it on real paper. <laughs> I didn't even know we had actual paper on board. It's kind of nice to you know, look at something other than screens, <laughs> you know? Anyway, all of us got up and shared something that we'd miss most about Earth, and I talked mostly about hiking. <laughs> I used to hike every weekend. I'm from the province of Oregon in Cascadia. So much good hiking there. <laughs> I'm kind of realizing that being trapped on this ship for the next two and a half years might actually make me go insane. <laughs> I just wish there was like, I, I don't know, a horizon, skyline, I don't know, the ocean, something, you know, to look at. Nothing but walls and corridors. Something I didn't realize that I would miss. One of my other friends, Olivia, she uh, gave us a little pep talk at the end. Reminded us that we we're tough women. We could deal with a few years of misery just for the benefit of humanity. Um, and she told us that Gigi is gonna be awesome, just as awesome as Urso is, um, you know, maybe even better. <laughs> we should look forward to Gigi and, and our adventures on Gigi and not spend time just thinking about it what we would miss. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do just that. Or do I try, I guess? <laughs> I know we're only supposed to do these video journals once every week, but I, I feel like... Wong Fong, turn off ocean sounds. Sorry. I, uh, I get sick of listening to the noises of the ship, so I put on background sounds sometimes. Let me, let me see if I can turn the mic up so you can hear it. I listen to every moment of every day. <sighs> I probably shouldn't listen to Earth sounds since I'm, you know, looking forward to Gigi. We don't have any auto recording of Gigi though, so I'm working with what I got. <laughs> anyway. I know we only have to do these video journals once a week, but I, uh, I feel like it helps me think through things, so I'm just trying to do them a little bit more often. Plus, I'll probably totally forget and just not do it by the end of the week. <laughs> you know what? I, I say week. But that's just because they tell us to do these video journals every seven days, although we really don't, we don't work by a week anymore. Like in, in my head, it's still a week, but they just go by days now. You know, like this is day 30. There's no week or, or weekend. There's no, you know, Monday through through Sunday. It's just, just days. I mean, every day is pretty much the same, right? Like I, I go to work and I still can get days off of work and then I can, you know, but there's there's no weekend. There's no weekend that comes after five days. Just even the concept of day is obsolete now that I think about it. I mean, it's based off the rotation of the Earth, right? You know, and, and we're leaving the Earth. We're never going back, so why does it matter how many times it rotates, right? I mean, Gigi, it, it, a day on Gigi is 12.2 hours. So, I mean, what are we supposed to do with that? Actually, Gigi has three moons. That's gonna make months pretty weird. I mean, I, I really don't know how we're gonna even obtain time or, or organize it when we get there. What about minutes and hours? I mean, if days are different lengths, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense, you know, like to have minutes or, or hours because they're based off of the divisions of Earth days and even, even seconds don't work anymore. So we're gonna have to just change our, our entire style of time. That's the thing about leaving Earth. Um, everything is so much work. Everything requires thought. I mean, you can't take anything for granted anymore. Even, even something as simple as time just changes right from under you. <laughs> Any, anyway. Uh, the, the potatoes are still dying. And now we're seeing it happen in other crops too. <laughs> I, uh, I took a sample of our nutrient solution to the chem lab just to see if they could see if anything was weird about it. I should hear back by tomorrow. I think the chemist that I was talking to was flirting with me though, <laughs> so. That's a positive thing, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to die out here. Hey, it's me again, your favorite colonist. Uh, 
So I'm Wayne and me, we, uh, we have the same work schedule, so I never get any time to record these journals. But it's his turn in the shower right now, so I uh, thought when I have the chance, I'll take advantage of it. Okay, um, what happened today? What happened today? Oh, um, Nadia found out that she is pregnant, which is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I know we're a colony ship, but we're really not supposed to be doing all the Adam and Eve stuff until we actually make it to Gigi, but I guess she just got excited about the mission. <laughs> uh, apparently, um, a father is some guy from sanitation that she hooked up with. That kid is gonna be born further away from Earth than anyone else has ever been. And I thought I was cool for being born on Mars, but that's, um, that's nothing anymore. But uh, anyway, they're trying to figure out if it's safe for her to keep working in the lab or if labor needs to find her another position. If that's so, I will be short another lab tech. Oh, uh, speaking of sanitation, <laughs> um, someone sent me this uh, security video. <laughs> Some guy. Uh, dropping his pants and taking a huge, and I mean like huge dump right in front of the Minister of Sanitation's office. <laughs> uh, Colonial Security grabbed him up before he could even finish buckling his pants. Gosh, that guy's gonna be in the, uh, be in the break for a long, long time. Assuming, you know, we live that long. Of course. Anyway, the um, the big news right now that people are talking about is there's some kind of crop failure happening. I've been hearing rumors, but today I actually had some potato lady from the Ministry of Agriculture come by my office and ask to uh, test their nutrient solution, see if there's anything wrong with it. I, uh, I guess the entire GG colony and its 5,000 colonists depends on um, them figuring this out. So I, um, I should probably get to that tomorrow, if I have time. You know, she was, uh, she was kind of cute, the potato lady. Tried to put on the charm, see if I could get a date out of it, but I couldn't tell if she was interested or annoyed. It could be both. I, I just, um, I don't know. I'll probably ask her to come by my office once I have, um, the results ready, but... Instead of messaging her. Gotta try, right? You know, to be completely honest, I'm, I'm not really too worried about the crop failure now that I'm thinking about it. I, uh, you know, I don't really eat veggies. Maybe this will finally purge the uh, vegetarian tendencies from the human gene pool. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I have a naked Chinese account to deal with right now, so I'm going to call this video quits. Great time. The purpose of this announcement is to remind all colonists of a few important topics. First, you are personally responsible for whatever messes that might occur in your pod whenever operations has to stop the gravity spin for maintenance. You're not supposed to bring food or drink to your pod anyway, so don't come whining to sanitation when that prune juice you smuggled in suddenly shorts out your terminal. Follow the rules, stow your possessions properly, and leave us out of it, because we got bigger issues to deal with. Second, please remember that <laughs> used prophylactics should be placed in reclaimers instead of incinerator pods. That sounds just as disgusting to us as it does to you. But if you go take a look out of any viewport on this ship, you'll notice there's no babbling brook out there where we can just go fetch a pail of water. So we have to reclaim all the moisture we can. Your secret sauce is about 97% water so we need to keep it in the system. And my people do not want to go pick it up and move it from the incinerator queue into the reclamation queue. So do us all a favor and put it in the correct pot in the first place. And third, a brief update on C4008, the drunken wit who thought it would be hilarious to drop his pants and leave a big steamy donation in front of my office. 
After a very efficient trial by the colonial court, he's just been convicted for biological terrorism. And we'll be spending the next six months or so in the brig. In his inebriated stupor, he, he somehow forgot that everything that happens on this ship is tracked in intimate detail. Intimate. It took security maybe 30 seconds to find and arrest him. You know, I, I, I hate people that make a mess out of this ship, and I have no mercy whatsoever for those that take that kind of behavior to a criminal level. I sincerely hope he slips and falls out of an airlock. Thank you for your attention. This has been an announcement of the Ministry of Sanitation. As always, remember, cleanliness is next to godliness. Malvia out. I, uh, I just got back from the chemistry lab and we went over the nutrient solution that I gave them to test and um, as far as I can tell, nothing's wrong. The chemical, Composition is consistent with what it should be, and I was really hoping that they would find something. I mean, anything, honestly, like uh, maybe chloride or, or sodium ions, um, pH imbalance, dilution, nutrient imbalance, something like that. But nope, no, nope, nothing's wrong. <laughs> the uh, the ag minister. He has made the official decision to destroy the entire crop and start from scratch. Not just our potatoes, but everything. I mean, um, all the affected crops. Corn, rice, cassava, soybeans, sorghum, staple crops. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot. Tomorrow we're going to have to dismantle all the hydroponic systems, rebuild everything, and clean everything, and then we're going to use our backup equipment so we know that they're clean. So, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> Honestly, I might actually head over there tonight so I can get a head start. Things are, uh, they're looking bad. Um, we might have to go on rations for the next couple of months, like half rations. I mean, there's been no official communication about the crops yet, but um, it's only like a thousand people on this ship and word spreads pretty quick. It's like a small town compared to like a city, you know? The, uh, the other four ships are looking at sending us some food so we can, you know, tie this over a little bit until we figure this out. People are already stealing from the mess hall and selling food on the black market. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, the other day, this guy, he comes up to me, half a bucket of egg salad. He goes, I'll give you this if you show me your boobs. I'm sorry, let the record show, Nova Riley's boobs, they're worth a whole lot more than a half a tub of egg salad. I mean, they're not for sale, but if they were, it's not gonna be for egg salad. Fernanda said she went to the rec hall last night and there was this guy there preaching about how, you know, humans should have never left the earth, that the crop failure is God's will. And it sounded like one of those earth home people that bombed the training facility before we left. I guess he had quite a crowd going before Colonial Security shut it down. So, I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But why would you get on a ship that's leaving Earth just to preach about not leaving Earth? You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I'm going to go hit the head and probably just get a head start on the night shift. Defying God, it's a lot of work. Brothers and sisters, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge Hazik Makari and Jenny Chu, who were recently assaulted by colonial security for attempting to exercise their God-given right to warn sinners about the consequences of their actions. I visited them in the brig last night, and they are both in good spirits. They knew the risks, and they still chose to take action anyway. 
I pray we may all be so brave and faithful when it is our own time. We believers, we precious few, we martyrs are the hand of God here. This colony has defied him by abandoning the garden he provided us. He reaches out through us to correct the wayward actions that have happened. And we will not fail him. That said, with justice must come mercy. It is our sacred duty to warn this colony, to call them to repentance before their day comes. We cannot save their physical bodies from the cold vacuum of space, but we can still try to save their souls. Remember the proofs. Genesis 1.28, Genesis 9, Psalm 37, all the proofs make especially sure that everyone on the ship hears Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Repeat that until they know it by heart. Repeat that until they have realized the mistake they made by leaving. Brothers and sisters, the day of glory comes quickly. Do everything you can to speed it along. Paradise awaits us, and I can't wait to see you there. I love you all. I am Sharif Sangrasi with GG Colony News. We begin with a story on everyone's mind right now. The unexplained crop failures on the Huangdi, affecting stable crops and severely threatening the ship's food supply. Prime Minister Larissa Pavlova confirmed the issue and announced the transition to half rations until a solution could be found. I know this is going to be difficult for everyone on board. And even though I'm aboard the Shun instead of the Huangdi, I've instructed my people to only give me half rations until this situation is resolved to ensure that I don't take lightly the situation that I'm placing you all in. I stand in complete solidarity with you and my rations won't be restored until yours are as well. Most of the 1,000 colonists abroad the Huangdi pull together to help each other through this challenging time. Some colonists, however, have fallen into much less helpful behavior, including theft, smuggling, and black market sales of food supplies. Kodiak Pushkin, director of Colonial Security, had this to say about it. I'm confident that the Ministry of Agriculture will resolve this issue quickly and everyday life will return to normal very soon. However, because this issue puts the entire colony at risk, I've ordered security officers to take decisive and aggressive action against colonists who defy the rationing guidelines. There will be zero tolerance for anyone putting the colony's survival at risk, and judgment against them will be swift and harsh. Over the past two days, the Ministry of Agriculture has completely dismantled the hydroponic system on the Huangdi and replaced it with backup equipment. However, some at the Ministry of Agriculture are concerned that this might not solve the issue. We're, uh, we're basically trying to eliminate every option that could be causing this problem. Um, the rebuild is one of those options, but there is a chance that even replacing all of this, the new crops could fail anyway. A sobering thought. Obviously, we are hoping and praying that this new crop will take hold and that the Huangdi's food rationing will last only a short time. Until then, we can only wait. With Gigi Colony News, I am Sharif Sangrasi. Thanks for watching. It's 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, I've been working for the last 15 hours and I finally came home because I was falling asleep at work. We're supposed to go through Chai Chow uh, sometime this morning and um, I'm hoping just to sleep through it. I know that they've tested this with multiple drones and things like that, but we're sending five colony ships through a warm hull for the first time and nobody's ever done it. So if we uh, blow up or break in half or something, I'd rather die in my sleep. <laughs> so. <sighs> I mean, that might actually be 
a mercy considering how the crops have been doing. Um, there's still no answer why they're dying. Um, we're following the exact same farming methods that they used on Luna, Mars, the space stations, but uh, they're just, they're not working for us. The Prime Minister, she officially ordered us to switch to half rations. Um, I'm just glad that she did it after lunch. <laughs> And now they're actually talking about having other ships go to have rations too, so. Everyone is uh, a little hungry and pissed off. <laughs> Fights are breaking out all over the place. <sighs> it happened with my boss actually today. Um, it's Boris Kuzman C. I don't. I don't remember his full ID. You can look it up if you want. Um, I think he was mad at me already for answering questions about the news, and uh, I didn't know I was not supposed to do that. Anyway, I. Uh, I told him that I wanted to run a chemical analysis on the samples of the nutrient solution from inside the trays. Uh, that's where all the plant roots actually suck up the nutrients. Uh, last time when I took a sample, it was from the barrels, but I just figured it made sense to take something from the actual trays in which the plants suck up the nutrients. And uh, after that, he said, uh, well, he flipped out. He told me that I was being an idiot because <laughs> whatever's in the barrels is what's in the trays. And he said that I was wasting time and resources. <sighs> and then that if we all died, it, it would be blamed on people like me, so. <laughs> I, I tried to explain that we were running out of other things to try and it made sense to test that as well. And he told me to shut up and not talk about it for the rest of my shift. <laughs> So, I went back to the potato crafts and for four hours I set up different lighting cycles so we could test that, even though that's what I did the other day. But I, uh, took a sample. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, tomorrow I'm, uh, I'm going to go back to the chem lab and see if they can do an analysis on this. I don't know if that's even possible because everything on board is tracked, but maybe, maybe if you can just fudge it and somehow, I, I, I just don't want it getting back to Boris unless he actually finds. Attention all colonists, we are commencing Chue Chiao wormhole transition. Please remain alert and immediately report any anomalies. Thank you for your cooperation. No. Estimated transition time, no, 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 24 no, no, seconds. No, 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 I, I, I'm, not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. I, I don't want to do this right now. Please, 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 no. No, 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 okay, okay, please, please let this work, please. Chua wormhole transition complete. All five colony ships are now in wormhole space. Have a good morning. Nova, you seem to have stopped talking. Do you want to continue recording? No! Zanwei was out all night with his girlfriend, so when we got back from work, he passed out in like five seconds. <sighs> um, 
Anyway, I got a few uh, pieces of information for you guys. First is that apparently we went through the wormhole last night. Um, there was a bit of good news today, though. Um, the uh, potato lady, Nova, she came by my office again today and um, wanted me to test some more of that nutrient solution. See, uh, she went by on her boss to get it and everything, asked me to test it um, off the books. <laughs> And let me explain to you why this is good news. One, she asked me specifically. Two, she trusts me with a secret. And three, the law of reciprocity means that she's way more likely to say yes if I ask her out on a date. And four, she was a little off. Like, you know, not enough sleep, a little out of a rocker, but it was cute crazy, not scary crazy. I can handle cute crazy. <laughs> oh, Soundway, you are not cute crazy, brother. Uh, anyway, I finished the analysis today, and it turns out that this sample came back way different than the other sample. It took me a while to untangle the molecular signatures, but just before I ended my shift, I was able to work out a bunch of stuff in the sample besides a normal nutrient solution. So some kind of junk is getting into their system, and that's apparently what's killing the crops. I'm hoping that this uh, you know, helps them figure it out so we can go back on full rations since everybody's freaking out about food. Except me, because I run lots of snacks on board. I have more food than clothes here right now. <laughs> and uh, all this means your man, Porter Stuckey, is a genius. Tell your mom. Hey, uh, Juan Fon, can you send a message to C1014? New message to C1014. Nova Riley, what would you like to say? Nova, got your results here? Can I come by and talk? Would you like me to correct your grammar? No. Message sent. All right. Wish me luck. I'm hungry. being given half the amount of food that I'm supposed to get is making me a little irritable. <laughs> I mean, everyone's feeling that way, so. I, I don't even jog around the ship anymore. I'm afraid of getting caught in some riot. The, uh, the Earth Home people, uh, they infiltrated the colony, so uh, they're not really helping. <laughs> Apparently, there's dozens of them on board, and there are all these people saying, you know, humans are being punished. We should have never left the Earth, so. <laughs> Colonial security is saying that anybody who is supporting these ideals, um, they'll be arrested because they're stirring up so much trouble, so. Everyone's a little on edge. <laughs> I know I'm in the middle of it all. <laughs> I'm supposed to be solving it, and I still don't really have any answers. I mean, we're not even replanting the crops because we're pretty sure they're just gonna die, so. Uh, a few hours ago, the Shun tried to send over um, a shuttle with excess food to help us cut our losses and uh, we didn't really realize that uh, shuttles can't operate through wormhole space. We found that out when it exploded. So I've watched the tape dozens of times and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have nightmares about it. I've got a thousand people on this ship need food, and uh, we just realized the other colony ships, they, they can't help us. We're on our own. That is
is why I, I, I really, really have to figure. Nova, got your results here. Can I come by and talk? Wang Fang, call C2093. Calling C2093, Porter Stuckey. Hey, Nova, I got your results here. Do you want me to come by your pod? It, no, no, that's okay. Um, I can come to your pod. What's your number? It's okay. I, I don't mind coming by your place. No, it's really. Not... It's, o it's okay. I'm faster. Hap 10, pod 47. Pod 47. Okay, got it. Um, two minutes. Okay, sorry to cut that last one short. I ran over to Porter's pod so we could go over the analysis that he took on our nutrient solution that we give our crops. It should have been identical to the one that we took earlier, but it wasn't. And it also had a very small amount of chemicals that are very toxic to plants. We did it. <laughs> we, we did it. We figured it out. I mean, the chemicals are, are somehow getting into our lines. I mean, maybe they're leaking into the system. I, uh, I don't know how that would be possible because they're getting into multiple different crops. But I mean, still, this is... This is really good news. I mean, this is the best news we've had in a long time. And, and uh, now we know what the problem is. We can fix it. I'm kind of a little nervous about telling Boris. Um, he's probably gonna yell at me for doing something that he told me not to do. Um, but it doesn't matter. I can't think about that right now. All I have to think about is this. It's too important. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna save the whole ship. Actually, I should, I should probably go and tell him right now, so, um, uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> he fired me. Boris fired me. I took initiative <laughs> to figure out why our crops are failing. I knew it had to be the nutrient solution. I, so against his orders, I took a sample, I got it tested, and I was right. <sighs> there were toxic chemicals in it that had been killing our crops. That's the answer that we've been looking for. Our entire ship is at risk of starvation. And I'm the one who solved it. He said that the team would look into it immediately. And then he fired me. <laughs> said I was being terminated for insubordination. He said, he said, <laughs> he said that this is a life or death situation and that if he can't trust me, I can't go anywhere near the crops. <laughs> I, I tried to go back to help the team and he shut off my access code. Like I was some sort of security risk. I mean, <laughs> I'm the one that figured it out! Okay. Okay, um, I'm recording this journal entry as a way to collect my thoughts before I go to Colonial Security. And, uh, also, because I'm a little nervous to know what Boris might do to me, so I just want to have this recorded somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> um. I'm Nova Riley, C1014, a colonist aboard the Huangdi. Until today, I've been serving as a hydroponics engineer for the Ministry of Agriculture. About three weeks after leaving Earth, we began experiencing issues with our stable crops. We've spent the last several days working around the clock trying to resolve this issue without any luck. I suspected that there might be a problem with the nutrient solution we used to feed the plants. So I've been working with an analytical chemist from the Ministry of Science, Porter Stuckey, C2093, to analyze the solution. Our first sample came out clean, taken from the solution barrels. I wanted to analyze another sample from the solution lines to see if there were any difference in which was actually making it to the plants themselves. However, my manager, Boris Kuzmin, C3571, 
said that it would be a waste of resources and told me not to do it. However, I believe it was important. And because the safety of the entire population of the Huangdi was at stake, I secretly took a sample from the nutrient lines and brought it to the chemistry lab. Earlier today, Porter Stuckey reviewed the results with me and confirmed that there was a very significant number of foreign chemicals found in the nutrient solution, several of which are very toxic to plants. We found the problem. We found the reason for the widespread crop failures aboard the Huangdi. I immediately took this information to my manager, Boris, and he said that we will have the team work on it. He then terminated me for disobeying his orders and revoked my access to the hydroponic farm so I could no longer help the team. I thought that was going to be the worst part of my day, but it wasn't. I couldn't think of any way that those chemicals might have made their way into the nutrient lines. It's a closed system. It's not connected to anything that might be leaking those chemicals, and it happened across multiple isolated crops around the same time. So, I began to suspect that someone might be intentionally sabotaging the crops. It turns out that Boris forgot to revoke my access to the security system, so I could still review the camera footage. I've been going through that for the last couple of hours, and I found this clip. Um, Wang Fang, could you play the video clip to the journal recording? Okay, this is my manager, Boris Kuzmin. You can see here that he approaches one of the nutrient lines and removes what appears to be a syringe and inserts it into the line. You can see here that he's pushing down the plunger, which means he is introducing foreign chemicals into the line. I have found several other footages similar to this one which means he's been doing the same to other crops. There's no good reason to do this from a hydroponics perspective. So I can only assume that my manager, Boris Kuzmin, the individual in charge of all vegetable production on the Huangdi is intentionally sabotaging the crops. I can't understand why he's doing that. Maybe he's one of those Earth Home people. Um, maybe their plan is to kill all of us before we get to Gigi. Um, I don't know. I'm going to submit all of this to security. I now understand why Boris was so angry with me and why he fired me so quickly. I'm a little scared of what might happen to me once he finds out I've reported this, but a thousand lives are at stake on this ship, so I can't see any other reason, and I don't have any... Attention C1014, Nova Riley. You are under house arrest for suspected sabotage of ship operations. Your pod has been locked down and you are to remain there until your trial. All communication will be blocked except for an assigned advocate who will contact what? you shortly. Meals and a chamber <gasps> pot will be delivered to your what? pot. Thank you for your cooperation. Message repeats. <laughs> Attention C1014, Nova no. Riley. You are under house arrest for no. suspected sabotage of ship operations. No. Your pod has been locked down and you are to remain there until your trial. All communication will be blocked except for... At this moment, I am the most confused man in the world. Wait, no, I can't. I can't say that because we're we're not on Earth anymore. We're in space. Um, I'm the most confused man in this galaxy. It's true. He really is. <sighs> okay. 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 So, um, Nova, Riley, the uh, potato lady, the one that you know. We worked together to solve the potato incident. Um, I asked her if she wanted to go get dinner. And by get dinner, I mean 
go to the mess hall and enjoy crappy half ration meals while hoping a riot doesn't break out because everyone's still starving. Anyway, when I go to message her, Juan Fon tells me that I can't. That she's not available to receive messages. Now, I don't know what the hell that means, so I contact my buddy at Colonial Security and he looked her up and told me that she was arrested for sabotage. Apparently she was the one poisoning the crops the entire time. But that, that doesn't make sense, right? If she was the one who did it, then, then why did she come to me with the sample so I could figure out exactly how it was done? She seemed really obsessed with figuring out who it was. She seemed a little crazy, but cute crazy, not psycho crazy, at least, at least I thought. I bet there are two people in her head. One who is trying to poison the crops, and the one who is trying to solve the mystery. I bet she's psycho. Yeah, or maybe... They got the wrong person. Should I ask her? I, I can't send a message to her pod because it's on lockdown. I, I could send a message through her lawyer, but... I don't think she's been assigned one yet. They all work for the Colonial Court anyway, so I don't think that's a good... I... Oh, wait a minute. I think I know how to do it. That is the tone of voice you use when you are about to break the law. Are you going to break the law? Yeah, definitely, definitely am. Um, gotta go. It's been... almost... Hey, since I was arrested, locked in my own pod, and accused for crimes that I did not commit. Meanwhile, the man that actually committed these crimes and is trying to kill everybody on this ship is walking around, doing whatever. I haven't even heard from the advocate that they've assigned to me. I mean, they're probably just arguing over who has to take me. It's, it's not like they're gonna actually fight for me anyway. The colonial court and security they, they play for the same team. I mean, they just want law and order. They think they have the right person, and, well, the court will just wrap that up in a nice little bow for him. I'll probably be executed and sent to reclamation. A week from now, my chemicals in my body will have been sent to dozens of different ship systems. They locked me out of the network, so I can't talk to anybody. I, I can't explain anything. I can't ask for help. I, I can't prove my case. I can't warn anybody about what Boris is doing. All I can do is sit here and stare at the walls. <laughs> Think about the infinite vacuum that's on the other side of this floor. Anyway, I could record these journals. For posterity, at least. I mean, nobody here can even watch them until they're unlocked in a hundred years. But someone on Earth might see them when the drones bring them back. 
Maybe someone will see it someday and know that I was innocent. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> I mean, the, these documented journals, I mean, it's, who is ever watching this, you'll have seen the whole thing from start to finish. You'll know that I'm innocent, but there's nothing you can do about it. I'll be dead by the time you see these. So. <sighs> I forgot they brought me dinner three hours ago. I should probably eat something before I talk to the advocate, um, so I don't sound like a complete lunatic. <sighs> All right, <clears throat> what do we got here? Lentils. Uh, half a tangerine, that's, that's nice. Um, mm. Mashed crickets, good for protein. A candy. Thanks for that. What is this? Hey, it's Porter. I heard what happened. I have questions. If you're hearing this, it's because I smuggled you this ham terminal. I'm borrowing it for somebody else since your account is frozen. I gotta get it back, but anyway, Shoot me a message when you get this. Porter, Porter, listen to me. It, it wasn't me. It was my boss, Boris Kuzman. He's, he's the one killing the crops. I, I think he's one of those Earth Home people. I, I found a video of him doing it, but now I'm locked out of my account. You have to help me, please, please. Just find somebody. Um, try to convince someone to bring him in. Uh, they're, they're trying to kill us all, Porter. Everybody on this ship, please, please. You have to do something. Porter, I love you for this. <sighs> I am Sharif Sangrasi with GG Colony News. A suspected leader of Earth Home Movement, Lynn French c 01 Dublin was arrested by Colonial Security today. Proverbs 17.24 says that wisdom is before him who has understanding, but is the that... eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Oh. Shoot, sorry. I am Sharif Sangrasi with GG Colony News. A suspected leader of Earth Home Movement, Lynn French c 01 Dublin was arrested by Colonial Security today. Proverbs 17.24 says that wisdom is before him who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Only foolish pride could make us want to trespass on the Lord's dominion, especially after all that- Attention C0188, Lynn French. You are under house arrest for suspected seditious conspiracy. Your pod has been locked down and you are to remain there until your trial. My all time is up, will be blocked but you don't need me anymore. Stick to the plan. I'll see you all in paradise. Will be delivered to your pod. French has been seen preaching at various locations on the ship, and her ideology is consistent with that of other Earth Home Movement followers, specifically that human was never meant to leave Earth, and that the Gigi Colony project is an abomination destined for a terrible ending. With the entire population of the Huangdi already on edge due to reduced rations and looming threat of starvation, Colonial Security has taken a firm stance on public preaching by members of the Earth Home. The Earth Home movement's efforts to harass and demoralize their fellow colonists are causing real problems and won't be tolerated any longer. Across all five colony ships, not just the Huangdi, any public promotion of Earth Home ideas or results in immediate arrest. I'd like to say that they're free to practice their religious beliefs in private, but because their religious belief is that the colony project must stop at any cost, I doubt private discussions about it can even be tolerated. I value religious freedom as much as anyone, 
but the Earth Home Movement poses a very real threat to the survival of the entire colony. And that means that there's no place for it out here. Recent intelligence suggests French was actually one of the founders of the movement on Earth in the months leading up to the colony's departure and was a ringleader of the movement's effort abroad the Huangdi. Obviously, colonial security is hopeful that her arrest will help them dismantle the continued threat the Earth Home Movement poses to the colony. With GG Colony News, I am Sharif Singrasi. Thanks for watching. This is the message that I received from Nova last night. Porter, Porter, listen to me. It, it wasn't me. It was my boss, Boris Kuzman. He's He's the one killing the crops. I, I think he's one of those Earth Home people. I, I found a video of him doing it, but now I'm locked out of my account. You have to help me. Please, please just find somebody. Um, try to convince someone to bring him in. Uh, they're, they're trying to kill us all, Porter. Everybody on this ship. Please, please, you have to do something. And then a few minutes later, I received this one. Porter! Porter, I just saw the news about the Earth Home woman who got arrested. I've seen her before. She's visited Boris at work. I think they were dating. If you can find a connection between them, you can take that to security. That would obviously make him a suspect. So I uh, guess I'm taking off work today because I have to go all detective mode and um, figure out how to get this guy arrested before he kills the rest of our crops and starves us all to death. Just another day for Porter Stucky, right? Didn't you spend all day at work yesterday, tracking down fecal matter in hydraulic fluids? Don't bring me down with all your negativity, Zonway. I am a man on a mission right now. And aren't you late for work? I'm an accountant. It's fine. Yeah, but it is so much easier for me to record these journals when you're not here. It just stands like nobody's watching. So... I have to figure out how to prove Nova's boss was dating this Earth home girl so we can get him arrested. But the problem is, is that she got herself arrested. So it's not like I can just catch them together. <sighs> how am I gonna do this? I don't wanna end up in a break too. Sounds like what Oma is working on. Well, he's working on traffic analysis. How does that even remote? Oh! Yeah, 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 that's, that's interesting. Good thing I didn't go to work. He can see where everybody's been since we launched. He could prove that they were together. The data's been anonymized though. It's just random ID codes, not names or colonist numbers. Huh. But, if I was to follow Boris Kuzman, then cross-reference it with Omar's data, we can figure out which anonymous ID is his, right? The mind's work. Yeah, and, and the brig is full right now, so, so Lynn French is probably just locked in a room. I just spin the data backwards and figure out the times that they overlapped, right? I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm a genius. Juan Fon, can you call C3467? Calling C3467, Omar Al Balawi. I'm at work, ma'am. Is this important? Hey, uh, wanna help me save the entire colony? I mean. Maybe. Okay, cool. I'm coming over. Humanity would never survive without me. Hey, what about me? He made me give the hand terminal back. Porter did. Um, he had to return it before it was reported missing. The one he borrowed. It makes sense, um, I guess. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's hard not knowing what's going on outside of here. I mean, I'm lucky that I'm here and not in the brig because it's full, so, I mean, I have the wall terminal and it's not connected to the network, but at least I have games um, and I have you. Journal thing that I talk to and nobody talks back. I, uh, I did finally get to talk to my uh, assigned advocate this morning. He literally spent only 15 minutes with me. 
I tried to explain what was going on. He said he had surveillance footage of me sneaking up to the lines with a syringe and uh, doing something, which is pretty damning. And I said that I was taking a sample and he didn't seem to believe me. So um, I said that I found footage on the surveillance system of Boris doing it. And he said that he went through the available footage and didn't find anything, which probably means that Boris deleted everything. The planet we're going to, it's called Jijibi Shah. Uh, it's a Hindi word that means something like the will to survive. It was named a long time ago and it's just a, it's just a coincidence that it, uh, it turned out to be vaguely Earth-like planet. And um, that was a pretty good prospect for the whole colony project. But the name seems very fitting the will to live. I want to live. <laughs> I, uh, I want to see GGB Shah with my own eyes. I, I want to walk on the ground. I, I want to grow food there. I want to get married and, and, and have a family. I want to see humanity thrive there. I, I mean, it's my new home. And I want to experience it firsthand. And I am not going to let Boris Kuzmin or anyone else stop me from doing that. I am going to... Attention C1014, Nova Riley. You are released from arrest and no longer considered a suspect. Colonial Security apologizes for any inconvenience. Please return your food trays to the cafeteria and bring your chamber pot to reclamation. Thank you. <laughs> I, I guess I should go see him. I did it. <laughs> you knew I would. Because I'm reliable like that. But it's still nice to actually have done it. Would you like me to tell you how I did it? Good. Because I'm going to. Everyone on this ship has tracking chips. There are detectors all over the ship. So, by triangulating signal strength, the ship pretty much knows where everyone is all the time. Kind of lame, I admit it, but that's just how it is around here. Anyway, I have a friend who works in operations. His name is Elmar and he analyzes traffic patterns throughout the ship using anonymous data. Now, instead of uh, names or numbers, it's just a random ID associated with each person. Okay, now that doesn't really help us, but if you know exactly when and where someone was, you can find it in the anonymous data and track it backwards to find everywhere they've been since the time that we've been on board. That's not very anonymous if you ask me. <laughs> but it worked for me this time, so I'm okay with it for now. Boris Kuzmin, Nova's superior was easy. I just found his image in the directory and waited outside the hydroponics lab till he walked out, noted the time and date, and brought it back to Omar. <laughs> Lynn French, the ringleader of the Earth Home movement, was harder. Now, I had to use a favor oh, to me by a guy in uh, colonial security. Now, <sighs> 
probably should have saved that for a time I might up in the brig in the future, but oh well. He told me where she was, what pod she was, because I knew she was locked down there, and I just noted it and brought it back to Omar. He pulled them both up on the visualizer and was able to track both of them retroactively. It had shown that they had met up almost every single day since the time that we came on board. They would even have sleepovers in each other's pots, which is cute, but also evil because Boris was apparently trying to kill all of us and Lynn was probably just encouraging him. <laughs> anyway, um, we exported the data and filled out security's anonymous tip form. They'd be interested to know that the uh, man in charge of the crop failure is secretly sheet wrestling with the cult lady who says it's God's will that everyone on this ship dies. <laughs> and it just so happens, I was hanging out outside the hydroponics lab when he was arrested. That, that was fun to watch. <laughs> Ugh, but anyway, I'm basically a hero and all, so I'm expecting uh, flowers and a parade and it. Who goes there? It's me, it's now five out. You're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, honestly, I was going crazy in there. I thought they were gonna have to put me in a reclaimer. <laughs> Here, come in, come in. Um, sit down. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want anything? I got uh, potato chips. Uh, no, no, no that's okay. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. I was recording one of these. Oh um, no, no, journals. that's okay. Leave it. Um, I've been doing them too. Honestly, if anyone's been watching them on Earth, I mean, they might as well see the conclusion, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> well, listen. I'm um, just. I had to see you free again. I just, I knew we could do it. Honestly, I, I really don't know how to even thank you. I mean, if you hadn't snuck me one of those hand terminals, Boris would still be out there, and we wouldn't have made it. Wait, they did arrest him, right? Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> Here, let me, uh, let me pull it up for you. Right there. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, this has been the craziest few weeks of my life, and that includes actually leaving Earth. Yeah, I feel that one. <laughs> Porter, I, I really don't know how to thank you. I really appreciate you so much. I mean, if you hadn't snuck me that, it made all the difference in the world. You didn't seem like the plan killing type, so the arrest just, it just didn't add up for me. Plus, I've, I've always wanted to bring somebody out of jail, so check that <laughs> off the list. <laughs> we make a pretty good team. Yeah, we, we do. Maybe stop recording. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>